hi, this is problem uh, 14. So we are working with the concept of principle of work and energy. And why are we working with that principle? Because uh, we are relating the forces and we are being asked to find maximum displacement for us when it stops. So we are relating here that forces, which is the uh, weight, and the maximum displacement, and actually we could relate it velocity too. So we don't have any acceleration, therefore we don't use the, the approach of force uh, equals mass times acceleration. So we use the approach of principle of work and energy. And if we see here, the only forces that we are in our system are the weight and the forces of the spring. Therefore, we only have conservative forces. If we look at our principle of work and energy, which is work of non-conservative forces, T2 plus V2 minus T1 plus V1, we see this component is equal to zero, so we have conservation of energy between position one and position two. So we have T2 plus V2 will be equal to T1 plus V1 being T2, the kinetic energy, and V, the potential energy. So let's analyze our position. Our position is we have both springs uh, that are on stretch. They are in the stretch position. They are not generating any forces. But we have the um, block that, so to say, is fix here. So we release the block in position one. So if we had a pin, we took that pin out and then let the block go down, right? Position one, we have rest. So when we say that in the position one, we have rest, then the kinetic energy is equal to zero. So this is initial rest. Then the potential energy, it depends where we put the datum. So let's put the datum over here. Let's put a datum over here. So we will have an initial H1. So we could take the, the distance from our center of gravity, which will be the correct way to do it, but we don't know the dimension of the block. So in any case, this height that we find, it depends on our datum. So we could have, we will, if we take the dimension of the block into consideration, we just have to rise the datum. So what I'm trying to say is that the potential energy is the change of potential energy that is interesting to us. So the dimension of the blocks are not relevant. We continue with the potential energy. Since we put the datum down here, we have positive potential energy, which will be equal to mass, gravity, times high, one. The mass is given, which is 100 kilograms. The gravity is known. And we have H1. H1 we will take into consideration, which is 0 0.75 meters plus 0 0.4 because they are saying that our block is 7.7 meters above our first spring. Here, the system has two springs. One, which is spring A, which a constant of 12 kilonewtons over meters, has a stretch length of 0 0.4. Then we have another spring, which is 15 kilonewtons over meters, which has a stretch length of 0 0.3. And they are asking us to find the maximum displacement of spring A to stop R. So we will think that if this is position one, if we draw our position two, I draw it over here because this is, if not, it will get too crowded over there. So I will draw my block over here. This is the distance that I want to find, H. Two, and both springs will be compressed. So I can imagine my initial distance was 0 0.4. And the other spring is also compressed. So my 0 0.3 meters. So both springs are compressed in my second position. So we continue analyzing to analyze the position two. 
we are being asked to find this final displacement when um, the block stops. So we know that this is zero because it stops. So the velocity is zero. And then, the, oh, here I had only the gravity because I didn't have any, the springs were on stretch. But here I have the potential energy of the weight plus the potential energy of the spring A plus the potential energy of spring B. So I have three potential energy. So I will have that the potential energy of the block still positive because it's above the datum, which is the same datum as the one before. So that's my datum. So it will be equals to 100, 9.8 times H2. And then I have the potential energy of my springs. So it will be one half Ka. How much is the displacement of Ka? Ka is the pink one, is the bigger one. So as you see here, I have, it has compressed this distance. So this distance over here, this distance over here. So that will be the compression of block B. So it will be 0 0.4 minus H2 and for spring B will be 0 0.3 minus H2 squared. So we plug in these numbers over here. We have these two values equals to zero. So we got these values equal. I have to plug all this here into here and all this here into here. As you see, the only unknown is H2. So this becomes a quadratic equation. So if you extend this binomium, right, it will be 0 0.4 squared minus 2 times 0 0.4 times H2 plus H2 squared. And so you do that for that binomium as well. I can write you the equation that I got. Is Remember that Ka and Kb are given and in kilonewtons. So you have to multiply by 10 to the third, right? So the equation that I got is this one right here. So solve the quadratic equation. And you have two solutions, right? H2 and H2. Let's see, and I what I got was 0 0.5 or seven meters and 0.068 meters. So we have to know which one of those two solutions makes sense. As you see, this one is bigger. So it means that if I take this solution, it means that the block never touched, never, never touched the spring. So that do not make sense. So this this one does not make sense for the physical problem that we are dealing with. So we have to take into consideration this is our solution. So, but that's not what we are being asked. What we are being asked is the maximum displacement of spring A. The maximum displacement of spring A is this one here that I wrote in green. That, that will be the maximum displacement, so which is 0 0.4 minus that. So the maximum displacement of spring A is equals to 0 0.4 minus that distance that I got, 0 0.068. Therefore, finally, the maximum displacement is equals to 0 0.331 meters. And if we analyze that result, it means that I almost compress the, the spring absolutely, right? I, boy, it's very compressed. So it, it is, the block went very much down in order to, and it compressed both springs. We could actually calculate how much the spring B was compressed by subtracting instead of 0 0.4, 0 0.3 minus this, this, and it was also very compressed. So this is the solution of this problem.